Good morning, New Beginnings. It's me, Pastor Danish House. Today is Tuesday, March 29th, 2022. Thank you so much for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I'm glad you decided to make me part of your life today, and I'm delighted to be part of your life as well. That delighted that you're part of my life as well. That's what I say. Um, yeah, so today you can see I'm still in my home studio, although that's a little bit deceptive. I'm recording this yesterday. Monday, because uh, today, Tuesday, my, I, have a, I have a busy early morning schedule, not able to record the video. So the truth is we might have power at the church today. Um, as I, in between recording last video and recording this video, um, I've been texting back and forth with Dave Beckwith and Jim Sylvester, and there is a good deal of hope that we'll have power by Tuesday morning. So I'm, I'm hopeful. So I could be, uh, tomorrow morning, I could be at the church working and, uh, as you watch this, I could be at the church working. So we're hopeful, praying for that. Um, but uh, I don't know for sure. So, uh, and because of the schedule I need to keep today, um, I'm recording this video yesterday. Today, Tuesday, March 29th, is National Vietnam War Veterans Day. And uh, we want to just express our gratitude to all those who fought in the Vietnam War. And especially now that uh, we're watching war unfold, uh, in in the in Ukraine, um, we are especially cognizant of the sacrifices that uh, those uh, who are in our armed forces have made in the past to uh, keep us safe and keep us free. So thank you so much to our uh, Vietnam War veterans. Because today is Tuesday, tonight there is Celebrate Recovery for Men and for Women at 6.30 p.m. at Full Gospel Center in their sanctuary near uh, Arlington High School. So check that out. Uh, meeting for men, meeting for women at 6.30 p.m. Celebrate Recovery. Uh, helping people with their hurts, their habits, and their hang-ups. Helping us to grow as disciples of Jesus Christ. It's a great group. Check it out. Wonderful helping you to grow as a disciple of Jesus Christ. If you would like to give to support the ministry of the Christian and Missionary Alliance on the ground, in Ukraine, uh, here's the web address you can go to. It is secure.commaservices.org slash comma give slash hashtag gift dash form. And I'll show that web address again at the end of our devotional video in case you missed it this time. On Sunday, I preached out of First Timothy chapter 2, and I mentioned that it is one of the most controversial passages in Scripture. Um, it's certainly the most controversial passage and hotly debated passage in the pastoral epistles, First and Second Timothy and uh, Titus. But um, it is one of the most controversial in all of Scripture, and it's because of what it says about uh, the need for women to remain silent, it says in some translations, in the churches. And um, I walked very carefully yesterday through my interpretation of that passage. And if you didn't get to see that and you're interested, definitely check out this Sunday's service. It's archived on our live stream site, but it's also, uh, this one was actually on Facebook Live, and you can find it on our church's Facebook page. Um, so that was March 27th, so check that out. Um, one of the things that was, is, was apparent as I was studying, I read a lot about this passage, and I really stuck my nose in books. I did my own study of the passage first, and then I went into commentaries, and, and I read, like I said yesterday, or Sunday, I read 200, over 250 pages worth of reading for that uh, sermon in commentaries and scholarly articles. One of the things that came up, and, and I, I thought this was really a wise comment, one of the commentators uh, Bill Mounts, in his commentary on 1 Timothy, said that, uh, that where you end up on this passage uh, oftentimes is determined by sort of your, your preconditions, presuppositions about this passage. Uh, where you wind up oftentimes has to do with where you start out. And so, um, you know, I noticed as I was reading it that there seemed to be two sort of uh, streams in the commentaries. Uh, one stream uh, were people who sort of focused in on the question of what do the words in the passage mean? If I can just study the Greek words, parse them out, look at where they're used in other places, if I can just figure out what each word means, then I can figure out what Paul means in the sentences that are under debate. Um, that's one stream. The other stream of commentators start with the cultural context and the historical context. 
and ask the question, okay, uh, what's Paul's history uh, in the book of Acts? What are his other writings say uh, that'll help us to understand what he could be saying here? Um, and I think both of those are legitimate streams of investigation. But what I tried to do in my sermon was to bring both of them together, not just to look at cultural context, but to study the words and not just to study the words, but to look at the cultural context. The words are important and the context governs how we interpret those words. So I just want to take a, pull the curtain back as it were, and show you a little bit about my thinking. If, if, if Sunday's sermon is where I ended up, what, what are the thoughts that led to the preaching of this sermon? Well, for me, one of the guiding lights in this question of uh, what is the role of women in uh, ministry and in life is Galatians chapter three, verse 28. Galatians 3, verses 27 and 28 says this, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male and female. For you are all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, so what is that passage telling us? Um, so uh, does this mean that there are no longer any gender differences for Christians? Um, well, uh, it can't mean that, that there's no longer any gender differences, because clearly there are biological differences between the genders, between the sex and genders. Um, there are um, there are certainly are cultural factors that go into it. Um, the Apostle Paul here says there's neither slave nor free, and yet he does address slaves as slaves in some places, and he, ad he addresses uh, slaveholders as slaveholders in, in some places. So even though the distinction between slave and free is somehow eliminated in Christ, it still also in another way does persist. Uh, there is neither Jew nor Greek, and yet there are places in Paul's writings where he addresses Jews as Jews and Greeks as Greeks. He himself sees himself as called as an apostle to the Gentiles. So even though in Christ the Jew-Gentile distinction is erased, um, it doesn't erase it entirely. It still has some lingering effect. Um, well, so some interpret that passage as saying, well, that's just about salvation. It means that Jews and Greek alike can be saved, that slave and free alike can be saved, and that men and women alike can be saved. Some say that it really has only to do with our, our salvation and our worth in, in the eyes of Christ, that Jews and Greeks uh, are both worth everything in the sight of God, and that male and female are both uh, worth everything in the sight of God, and, and slave and free as well. I, I don't dispute those, but I would say that's not all of it. Um, I don't think that's the entirety. Um, because what he says here is in Christ Jesus. And I want to just go back to this and says, For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. What does it mean to be baptized into Christ? Does it just mean salvation? No, it certainly does mean salvation. Baptized into Christ means baptized into the faith. Um, but I think it means more than that. I think it means being baptized into the church as well, the, the body of Christ. There is neither slave nor free, Greek, Jew nor Greek, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Again, I think that has to do with not just salvation, but also do, uh, has to do with uh, life in the church, that we are part of the body of Christ. We are in Christ and Paul elsewhere will use that phrase in Christ to talk about our relationship with other uh, members in the church. So when I read this passage, I do see it as being about salvation. I do see it as being about uh, the faith, but I also see it as being uh, about part of being part of the church. And so when I interpret this passage, Galatians chapter three, verse 28, what I would say is that uh, there are gender differences out here in the world, right? Uh, there are physical differences between men and women. There are physical differences. There are uh, there are cultural differences, although that differs from culture to culture what those differences are. In every culture, there are differences between men and women. 
Um, there are gender differences in the home. Uh, the Bible talks about uh, the husband being the head of the household in some way. And we'll talk more about that as we go along. Um, but I believe that in the church, the gender differences are wiped away. Um, I believe that in the church and in the faith, there's no distinction between men and women. Now, we belong to a denomination. I belong to a denomination uh, where there are gender differences in the church. And I submit to that uh, within our denomination. Um, but, uh, but if you're asking my personal belief about how to interpret the scriptures, that's what I would say. That those gender differences are eliminated in the in the church setting, in the, in the church leadership setting. Um, now, you may disagree with that, and, and praise God if that's if that's your understanding. Uh, let each one be convinced in his own mind. Um, I think what is clear, though, and uh, what seems to me to be clear, is that uh, the gender distinctiveness in the church, wh whether it exists or not, that's not a first order question. It's not a second order question. It's a third order question. And historically, in the Christian and Missionary Alliance, uh, the question of the role of women in the leadership of the church has been a uh, a third order matter. It's been a matter on which there is freedom for for dispute and and discussion. And so that's that's where I come down. Um, we, you know, we are brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of whether you agree with me on this or not. And I I love and trust and and. Uh, I'm honored to be in a church with you, whether you agree with me or not on this. Um, but that's. But I want to pull the curtain back and let you see where my thinking is. Um, in Christ, that is, in the faith, in the eyes of God, and in the church, there is no male and female. Out in the world, yes, there is, and and in the home, yes, there is, but but not in the church and not in the faith and not in the eyes of God. I'll talk more about this as the devotionals continue this week. I am going to focus a lot of attention on this because it is a matter of some dispute. Um, and I hope that you'll join me for this journey. All right. Praise God. Thanks for being with me. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Thank you for your love for us. Thank you for uh, the fact that each one of us, every person within the sound of my voice has equal worth in the eyes of God. Thank you that each, every person in the, within the sound of my voice, if they've given their lives to Christ, uh, are are equally saved in Christ. And Lord, I believe that every person within the sound of my voice, if they're in Christ, that uh, that they have equal uh, opportunity to use the gifts that God's given them in the life of the church. And Lord, I, I, I pray that you'd, uh, if I'm wrong, correct me. And if, if, uh, and if I'm right though, Lord, I, I pray that that would become the common wisdom in the church. Uh, it is a joy to serve together, though, uh, in, in our church and in our denomination. Uh, Lord, I thank you for the our National Vietnam War veterans. Thank you for their service. Thank you for all those who are uh, in our armed service willing to put their lives on the line for the freedom and safety of their uh, fellow Americans. Uh, and Lord, I thank you for Celebrate Recovery. I pray your blessing on tonight's Celebrate Recovery meeting. May it be blessed. May all those who go uh, be encouraged and strengthened by one another as iron sharpens iron. Lord, we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for this daily update and devotional video. I love you, New Beginnings, and I look forward to talking to you again tomorrow.